What's up guys, Ergonix here, and I know, I know, I haven't posted any videos in quite some time, but I'll get into that in another video, a vlog video or something. Um, for now, I want to get this audio visualizer tutorial out because my system is actually playing nice right now. So, let's get on with it. As you know, Calc Programmer 1 did the old visualizer that I did my old tutorial for. It worked. Awesome when things went well. He has updated it to be way more user-friendly, way easier to install, and you don't have to loop back audio, which is amazing. I love it. So much easier to use. It just detects your default audio device. It's amazing. So we're just going to head over to this uh, link here. It'll be down in the description. All links that you will need will be down in the description. All of them. So you're going to scroll down and you're going to hit up, head over to the Chroma Workshop and download the Auto Visualizer. Now you don't have to go to the workshop, you can go to the workshop, but I would recommend just downloading it here. Just click this link and bomb, off you go. Uh, now, within Razer Synapse, there's this Chroma Apps thing. If you are going to suggest that we do it this way, go for it. I mean, you can try it. If I click on this Apps List thing, Razer Synapse crashes, and sometimes blue screens my computer, so I don't use it. <laughs> I'm not going to use it at all. So anyways, you download the audio visualizer, you get a zip file, it's in your download folder, or wherever you downloaded it to. You open it, you got your visualizer, which is the program you're going to be using, and a VC distributable pack, which will contain some DLLs and other necessary files for the visualizer to run. So, extract these, and you're going to run the VC redistributable EXE. You're going to be presented with a window to install stuff. Yes, you want to install it. If you already have this installed, I would recommend doing repair anyways. I mean, there's not a whole lot that could possibly go wrong. I did it. I've done it numerous times with other redistributable packs, and things have worked fine. So, you just go ahead and do that. Yes, I want to cancel. And before you open your visualizer, like that, that redistributable pack should pretty much cover everything you'll need for the visualizer to work. But before you open it, close Synapse. Like everything else SDK related, Synapse does not play nice. I don't know why, I can't figure it out. Synapse is just evil when it comes to the SDK. So we're just going to close Synapse. And we're going to open the visualizer and it should open just peachy keen so you are good to go we're gonna pick some music i'm gonna pick something from a local artist infinite again his link a link to his soundcloud will be in the description down below as well uh, if you like the music that i'm gonna play i'm gonna play let's go with hit him hard yeah let's uh notch this down just a tad so once you got music playing you can see that my keyboard is sort of responding uh not a lot though that's because i just turned the vi audio down to virtually nothing so in the newest update bam you change the amplitude ta-da it's better let's uh crank that up a little more let's go 500 oh not 5000 500 there we go my audio is super low, but my visualizer looks awesome. Alright, so that's what the amplitude does. Cranks up the FFT effects. Uh, FT, FFT window mode, I have no idea what that does. Not a clue. Ask Calc Programmer one. He'll know. Uh, background brightness, in the event you do have a background set, I'm going to go with the color wheel. Set it to like 100. Boom! Is bright, but yeah, I generally prefer about 5%. And that's only if I have a background enabled. I usually don't. Average size is the width of the bars. Uh, at 8, it's usually pretty good. I prefer 10. Uh, you can set it to something like 50, but as you can see, there is 5 bars, 5 and a tenth. Not much. I just prefer mine around 10. 
decay per step. Um, I think this one's a little bit backwards because if I set it to 100, there's like zero decay. And if I set it to 10, it goes stupid fast. Uh, it drops off really fast. I personally prefer between 50 and 70 is where I prefer it. Uh, delay is in I think that's the step delay, basically how many times it up updates every few seconds or whatever. Um, but I notice that sometimes things don't play nice, like if you look down here, this key's flashing a white. I'm not sure why. Uh, this one sometimes does it as well. I would say probably between 25 and 50 is your safest bet for this. I usually put mine around 40. But uh, this normalization offset, no idea what it is. Normalization scale, yeah, not a clue. No idea. Same with average mode. Other than the fact that it changes like this thing down here, I don't know if it directly affects the keyboard, but yeah, not quite sure. Uh, single color mode, I'm not entirely sure what that does exactly. Like, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, it doesn't really seem to do anything, so I just say follow foreground. And then you got different uh, color looks. You can go like pure colors, you can go with some mixed colors, you can go with a rainbow, or you can go with the blue cyan light, which is my preference. I like blue, I like white, so that's where I leave it. So we're going to stop the music here, and I'm going to explain a little bit more. Stoppy stoppy. Alright, now you might encounter some problems. Most of the problems you're going to encounter are down here. Uh, if you followed the old tutorial, you probably have the MSC 140 DLL already, so you probably shouldn't encounter this one at all. Um, at, it's an early build, clashes with advanced configurator, that's why we exit Synapse, because Synapse is mean, and it's a bully, and it makes me cry. So yeah, if you run into any problems, check out uh, the thread that you downloaded it from. Like I said, all links are going to be in the description below. If you run into a problem that isn't asked here, like explained here, uh, go ahead and post in this thread. If you don't want to do that or you don't want to sign up, you should be signed up. I mean, you just log in with your Reacher ID. But if you don't want to log in, you can go ahead and leave a comment. Uh, and if I can reproduce the problem, I will find a solution. And just on the off chance, there will be a link to the developer zone as well, where you can download the SDK installers and the developer package, which I have over here. This is the SDK installer. I personally had to install this. I'm just going to nuke that. I personally had to install the updated 1.2.4 SDK for the visualizer to work. Uh, this may not be the case for everybody because I got the visualizer uh, shortly after it came out. And ooh, what did I do? I probably just copied that or made it explode. Eh, whatever. Uh, this is the documentation stuff. If you're encountering some problems where it'll open and then immediately close, uh, you'll want to run one of these enable SDK support registry files. If you have a 32-bit system, you'll run x86. If you have a 64-bit system, you'll run x64. Don't know what system you have? That's cool. You can right-click, well, on Windows 10 you can right-click Go System. It'll tell you right here, 64-bit, 64-bit. And this getting this window will be a little different depending on the system you have. But just look up, you know, getting system info for your particular version of Windows and that'll tell you. So yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Uh, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, you know, do all those things I asked you to do months ago before I stopped making videos, which I, again, I will get into in my next video. So thanks for watching, guys. Keep being awesome, and I hope this helps you. And why are people texting me?